The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. I'm Patrick, Head of Technology at professional services firm Collins SBA. I'm a former financial advisor who just loves solving business problems and creating better client experiences using technology. Join me each week as we unpack the tech on offer to advice professionals, stay on top of tech trends and help you break free from the analysis paralysis experience when building and maintaining a great tech stack. Discover a world of advice. Join Matt Heiner, CEO of Net Wealth, as he chats to industry professionals and thought leaders on the latest technologies, business models, changing demographic patterns, and general trends impacting wealth management. Listen at netwealth.com.au forward slash between meetings. This ad is presented by Net Wealth Investments Limited and does not consider individual circumstances. Seek professional advice and read the relevant PDS to determine if Net Wealth is appropriate for you. Past performance is not a reliable indicator of future performance. Today on the podcast, we're talking all things automation with Luke Modelmeyer. So Luke's an account executive at Wakado, which is sort of like the more responsible, more capable big brother or sister of tools like Zapier. You know, Zapier makes you happier. This chat does get pretty detailed at times with acronyms like APIs and SDKs thrown around. To be honest, I don't really know what an SDK is, but a quick Google search tells me it's a software development kit. So code, documentation, guides, framework, etc., and most of you should know what APIs are or have heard of them before. So they allow you to connect or communicate with other systems. And Mercado just makes it really easy. I always get excited talking to Luke because he just reiterates what's possible and what can be automated. And of course, we also talk about AI in its use case. I first started by asking Luke what the oldest piece of tech he still owns is and whether he still uses it. Don't actually carry around a whole lot of tech with me. Kind of when I'm done with it, I kind of get rid of it. I was actually looking around the other day in terms of tech that I have yeah. that I still use. And like, honestly, the oldest thing I have is a pen I got okay. given out tech, of high yeah. school. I mean, I, I'm taking that as tech because they developed a okay. sort of space program. <laughs> right. That, that's, as, that's as close as I get. Everything else, I, 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 I literally just, I, I get a new phone every few years. I upgrade my computers all the time. And if I don't use them, nice. I can't get rid of it. So I kind of try to buy good stuff and then use it until I get need something better bit of planned obsolescence so you, you're staying in the same decade uh tech wise yeah uh, yeah 100 percent. nice so i guess uh, sticking to this decade and probably more specifically the last sort of 12 to 18 months have you got like a one or two cool ways that you're using ai personally yeah so this i use chat gpt an awful lot at the moment okay. um and and partly for work but partly outside of it um i've started GPT-4 is really smart. Um, okay. I kind of have a side project where I'd love to write a book. And so I've been asking it, basically having philosophical conversations around morality and those sorts of things to use them as prompt ideas for books, which has been, uh-huh. a, which has been a whole lot of fun. And surprisingly accurate in terms of like, I asked it about like, if, if God is all-knowing and all-powerful, how does the rest right. of that concept go? And asking for details into that, which has been fascinating. Um, and then the other bit that I've been using it recently for, for work is um, I built myself a GBT that can research a company. Yeah. Um, and then um, based uh, and then based on the person's job title, it'll figure out how that person contributes to the company, um, what the company is trying to do, and then we'll figure out how Wakado helps that person help the company what to do, and then puts together. Um, a complete email sequence that's entirely customized um, yep. in my voice. Um, the biggest challenge I have with that is the marketing software. Mm-hmm. I haven't found one that I can um, easily upload it to because most marketing software allows you to change first name, last name, right. you know, company and those sorts of things. But these are, you know, I've got um, two and a half thousand completely custom generated emails that I 
really well researched um, oh, and on the point that I'm, I'm using as part of an email marketing campaign. That's crazy. I think just for listeners, I think I saw something similar to this by you on LinkedIn. I think you took it maybe one step further in terms of projecting where it's going to be. Like I think you had this overlay where you essentially deep faked yourself where it was a video yeah. and it looked like someone else's mouth was um, yeah, yeah. speaking in a, in a voice that was vaguely yours. But- so I, I, I got the professional voice climbing done okay. um, and, and so the voice works really well. Just the, the video thing is super uncanny valley. Yeah. Um, it looks super weird and that was like as good yeah. as I could get it to look. Um, think, but I'm playing around with how that's going to work. I also think like maybe that's that's actually a benefit. Like it's actually a good way to break the ice. Like yeah. here is this really, I'm not going to say goofy, but pretty close to goofy looking video of me but not really me. Like, you know, let's grab a coffee sort of stuff. Like I think if I received a, a cold outreach like that, I think I'd be pretty intrigued. But so, yeah, we'll link to that post um, in the show notes because it's actually quite entertaining. So well done. Um, yeah, look, again, the the biggest challenge I had with that is um, I then needed to upload all of those videos to Vimeo right. and then you can't, because you can't send the whole video. So they, again, the problem was distribution. So I okay. had AI generating the whole thing and so then distribution um, just got super complicated. Um, so you, you solve things. one problem and then you've created another, like you just create your own bottleneck. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so um, I'm not super down with, all of the APIs and how to connect all that up. But, um, yeah, it, it, it's it's a cool use case. There's, yeah, there's no, some cool cool. things that are coming down the track there with that stuff. Yeah, no, it's it's really impressive and really cool using, um, yeah, something like Wakata to, to do that is is really awesome. And the speed yeah. at which you can do that too is, is really impressive. Um, I guess, yeah, let's dive into Wakato. So sure. first question is really where does Wakato sit in the advice tech space? What is it? And I guess the general sort of origin story of Ricardo. Yeah. So, um, Ricardo's uh, been around for about 10 years now. Um, we uh, kind of were a mix of a few different things. Um, uh, typically, people kind of think of us as an integration platform. And that's kind of what we're known for uh, and given our, uh, our, our kind of history and pedigree. Um, but we kind of use the terms integration and automation interchangeably. Yep. If you're trying to automate anything, you need to be able to connect to different systems. So we kind of started from that foundational layer of being able to integrate it into everything and then automate everything. It's kind of one of the taglines that we've used. Okay. The cool thing with Focado is it's a low-code, no-code SaaS tech. And the guys who actually founded Wakato, um originally came from Tibco. And so they've got deep expertise. And Tibco is used quite heavily in the banking sector in the U.S. Okay. It is yep. Um, so it's it's really an uh, enterprise integration tool. Um, yeah. Some of the guys were also involved in Oracle Fusion middleware. Um, one of the guys was involved in building out the original AWS cloud product. Oh, wow. And so you've got these really great technical people that have gone, let's build a low-code, no-code integration and automation tool with all the things that we know are going to be required for an enterprise team. So that's yeah. what makes us a little bit unique is we can kind of play in the space of a, a low-code, no-code tool, but then have the chops and the capabilities to do, um, you know, work for some fairly large global organizations um, with some of the yeah. things that we do. Yeah, I found it can be as simple as when this happens. This happens like a, a Zapier style. If, if this field changes, then send a text message or send an email or add to an email list but you can ramp it up real quick and you can go down a rabbit hole even quicker. And also notice on your LinkedIn, Luke, where you've got, you've started using the hashtag, if you hate it, automate it. Like yeah. it's just as simple as that of really like a seamless, creating a seamless backstage in terms yeah. of the business, which then translates to a maybe almost seamless front stage for clients or for whoever you're dealing with. Um, and it's just... Yeah, full disclosure. So we're actually Contest BA is a Wakado user and we use it for heaps of stuff. So for example, creating clients in multiple systems. So we're heavy Salesforce users. So if you create a client account in Salesforce, it's pushing that to zero blue, XBM, so zero practice manager, Stripe, sets them up in SharePoint, etc. 
we've been able to build our own internal proposal tool within Salesforce so that then uses Stripe for billing and Zero, so that clients can actually Apple Pay their proposals as well as sort of take care of that automated recurring billing. Um, we've automated the financial reporting of our business using Wakato. So every morning we get an up-to-date P&L as well as a balance sheet, which is consolidated across the five entities that make up the Collins SBA group. And recently, or more recently, we've been able to implement Stripe's identity product. So users or our team members without leaving Salesforce can generate verification session links and send them out to clients via yeah, SMS or email. Um, you've been busy since we last spoke. And like last time we spoke, you'd, you'd done a couple of things, but this is next level. You really have gone and taken the, taken the bull by the horns. Yeah, it's. I think it's a, a testament to the the speed of development. And obviously, this is a, an audio only show, but just that sort of Wakado visual canvas of, of building um, out a recipe, which, uh, yeah, as I said, most people are probably familiar with Zapier, like a Zap. So a Wakato recipe, it's just, it's actually dangerous, Luke, because you can, if someone has an idea or you think of something and you go, geez, I wonder how long this will take. You might say, oh, five or 10 minutes and you can get sort of version one quickly and then you can start to branch out and build something um, pretty crazy pretty quickly. Yeah, we just signed up an insurance company uh, in Sydney. And uh, we, we did a proof of concept with them as part of it to kind of pull some information out of an R database. Yep. And we had the developers there that were doing it and building it in Java code. And so they kind of, it, once we got it going, we got the connection up and running, I saw how long we had. And there was a one point where they realized they'd forgotten another meeting that they had to go to. And we had five minutes to build an API. Wow. And they were like, all right, let's 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 take on the challenge and see if we can build an API in five minutes for our Oracle database. And they got halfway through. There was 150 fields that they had to map um, as part of that process. Um, and, you know, the machine learning and workout made it a whole lot easier. But, you know, that process previously, um, they had scheduled two weeks to build that process. Really? And they'd, they'd, been, they'd been using Wakata for two hours and were smashing out um, APIs and trying to get it done within five minutes. Far out. So yeah, no it, it's just the it's just that piece. But to your point about how you can kind of go wild, um, it's kind of like the the next stage that we talk to a lot of customers about, and that's when you know we kind of talk about that scale and and having that background from those other products. Um, somebody like Atlassian is one of our larger customers. They've got about yep. fourteen hundred automations running through their organization, um, and Canvas going down this path at the moment as well. And so. Because we're a low-code, no-code solution, what we do, um, what we can enable is for other, you know, more business users to be able to use the system, build those automations, and then have IT or more technical people providing the guardrails and governance around it. So, um, you know, we like the ideal customer very much lets the rest of the business go nuts building stuff, and we provide those safeguards and best practices around how you can kind of manage that. If you think, you know, Atlassian 1,400 automations, I think they have about 400 people building automations yep. in that organization. I guess just trying to manage that in any, those many people in any system is complicated, but there's something that we've been able to consistently do. Um, oh, and that's awesome. and that's like, you kind of see the speed in terms of which you can build it, but then when you get an entire, when you get 400 people building at that speed, yep. that's where you can kind of do some really crazy things. Um, oh, my favorite one from Canva is... They they um, connected into the APIs of their vending machine um, okay. so, that it, so that when stock got low, it would automatically hit their purchasing system oh, wow. and um, refill their vending machine for them. So no stock would just appear at their front door. They just did it because they could. But you know. I didn't realize um, vending machines had APIs, but that's um, that just sort of reminds me of it might have been Amazon or, or someone that had those sort of buttons that you could stick on your fridge where something got low oh, yeah. and yeah. you could restock your milk or, or whatever was in there. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Like there's just so many applications for this. I think in the context of wealth management or, or financial planning firms, have you got like a couple of examples of yeah an advice business that's maybe used Wakato in a really cool way or maybe not even a really cool way because really cool is obviously subjective. Um, yeah. For example, what tools did they connect and what does the recipe do? Like how did they solve a particular business problem? 
Yeah, so there's um, um, most wealth management companies that we work with, they're kind of doing the standard, or well, like data management piece within their organization. Um, obviously, as, as most people know, there's lots of different um, business units within a wealth management piece. Um, and each one of those guys uses a different sort of system. And so trying to kind of give a consistent customer experience or even just, you know, um, the classic one is um, somebody wants to update their address and then they have to yep. go to five different departments within the same organization and do it five different times. Yep. Those are the sorts of things that I see quite a lot of wealth management organizations automating with Ricardo is those connections. And often um, there'll be one or two tools in there that are a little bit older and it's a little mm-hmm. bit harder to do that with. And so that's where we've done some unique things or we've been able to build and, and build some workarounds around how to, how to do those sorts of things. But yeah, those are the most bits. And then there's a few organizations that very much use it to speed up the process at which they bring customers in the door. Um, so uh, one of our wealth management um, group in Sydney they use it kind of for lead enrichment and automa- automating that whole scheduling process okay. so that they don't basically leave money on the table when somebody shows interest that they're kind of making use of that very quickly. Um, and then the other really cool one is anytime anybody connects it into uh, Microsoft Teams um, okay. to provide themselves with notifications or um, we had one team that was um, using Wakato for... Um, fund management uh, and into teams. So if uh, an investment opportunity came up, there was a process that they had to follow. Um, and they basically built that form into a Teams form with Wakato. Yep. And they put the approval process through Wakato on that piece. Oh, wow. So so you, you're essentially using Wakato to uh, create a essentially a configured a configured Microsoft Teams environment so you can do your work without leaving Teams but then follow that yeah. guide process. Is that right? Yeah, and because the big problem that they had was um, uh, they needed to, and I forget the standard, but we are able to show that um, one person has signed off and then another person has signed off yeah. on that process and so um, and then getting the directors to do it. Cause, right. And so previously that was a piece of paper that they'd run around from one person to another and you know, who, did they actually sign it? Did they not actually sign it? That sort of thing. And um, so what this enabled us to do is because we then spat out all of those times and authentication into a CSV type file, when it came time to um, get their audit done for this compliance check, they could they had timestamps on everything and they could show the workflow and go, there's no way this person could have signed it because they wouldn't have never received it before the other person had approved it. So that kind of, those, those audit controls were also all built into that piece from a compliance perspective. Um, yeah. So it sped up the process and 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 made their audit um, a whole lot easier. So a, a great example of compliance by design. So yeah. you're actually making that process compliant, but you're also making team members' lives easier because they're not having to go into, say, a spreadsheet and update yeah. it, which is, which is technically a separate system. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is one of the things I found really interesting working in, in financial services is automation, yeah, it saves time and, and, and that's great. But um, I was speaking to one of the banks and um, the challenge they have is they can tell you how uh, a certain number becomes the way that it becomes. They can tell you what the process is. They can't tell you exactly what happened to that number. Right. Um, and the great thing with automation is we have a record of all of that and so yeah. by virtue of automating it, there's an audit trail of everything that's happened where a person has interacted with it and made a change to it, where it's been an automatic calculation, how that whole process has happened. So yeah, automation makes that kind of compliance piece a whole lot easier as well as speeding up the whole process. Oh, yeah. So essentially in that example, it's like a, a blackboard or a whiteboard where you started with one number and all these equations happen, but you still see how we actually got to that end figure and whether that took exactly. five minutes or, or 24 days. And yeah. just to go back to your example about using teams and forms and compliance, like a couple of quick examples would be in financial planning, we've got um, SOAs or statements of advice as well as ROAs or records of advice. You could easily embed, say, a compliance process for something like a non-approved product 
or something like that. And I assume it could fire off to the right person based on their role within the business, yeah. follow them up if they're being slack or, you know, something happens, they've just missed it. Uh, because as we know, notifications are pinging off left, right and centre all the time. Yeah, even have it to the point where if the person doesn't reply within 24 hours, send it to their boss or send it to an alternate person that can sign it off for all of those sorts of things. It, it's the great thing with, with the system is because it's fairly easy to design the process and because, yeah. you know, basically if else statements or um, if and statements that, that you're making, you know, um, there's a utilities company in um, in Canada that uses Wicado quite heavily. Right. Um, they use it for their entire onboarding of, um, you know, was the 3,000 stuff. So all of their approvals for all of these sorts of things, it all, like, they're not using Teams to kind of surface this information, but they're using Wakado to help orchestrate that whole complexity from an organizational perspective. So you can get really complex. It's not going to be as complex as what you'd want to do for credit rating scores and approvals and those sorts of things. Right. But you can still get most of the way there with with these sorts of things. Um, and then I think I mentioned, or well, you mentioned before about kind of where you can take it. Um, there's some people within our organization and uh, there is actually another wealth management company that have started using Wakato to manage Wakato. Um, right. and, uh, so they use it to, um, if something stops working within Wakato or if something needs to change or if something goes too slow or all of, there's, there's a bunch of different scenarios that they have um, and a lot of it's around usage that they use Wakato and the automations to look at now uh, the automations and, and make changes to them as needed. It's a bit of Wakato inception. I also yeah. think when whenever I'm doing, say, demos of our tech stack or Wakato is brought up in a meeting and it's being recorded, somehow it always gets transcribed as Ricardo. So oh, people yeah. are like, who, who is this Ricardo bloke and why do you keep banging on about him? Yeah, um, yeah. Obviously not all heroes wear capes. He is technology. It's not a. It's not a person. But just on that, obviously, saying that Ricardo is not a person in our business, just to, just to, just to hone in on the point around like consistency of process and also scalability of if you've got the you're talking about the essentially the HR example of onboarding a new team member, that process can be the same for whether you have five, ten, fifteen people versus five thousand. But what it allows you to do is is scale that process and sort of just on that, before we implemented Wakado, we had a sort of contract Salesforce developer and basically the mandate for him was to, we would explore simple solutions and use simple tools where possible. So for example, before we were using Zapier as well as uh, we still use Salesforce Flow very heavily, but when it got to the stage where maybe the integration wasn't supported or the extent of that integration wasn't supported by Zapier, but you could do it if you delved right into the developer part of the the tool's website, what he would do is he would go and go custom with those sort of niche things that we needed. That was really great at the time, but future-proofing that was a struggle because it meant that we were very reliant on a custom um, integration, but also reliant on a developer who had coded. So using, you know, the Salesforce coding language, which is called Apex, um, JavaScript, all this other stuff. And what that meant was if he left, I would be left with that sort of tech debt. So it meant that like, I actually have no idea how to code. That's why I love Wakata so much is because it's, it's visual and also Salesforce flow tools like that. Zapier, they're visual and you, they, they give you superpowers. But what this means now with Wakato is I've been able to rebuild the integrations or those pieces of functionality that that developer built, but it means it reduces key person risk on me and it means that anyone in the business can learn these tools. Maybe if you don't mind speaking about, I guess, the the onboarding experience as well as the sort of self-help uh, learning tools that Wakato have as well to get started. Yeah, sure. Um, so, look, uh, Wakato being a low-code, no-code tool, um, the implementation or onboarding of it is very much a... Uh, so, Wakato, we provide you with an onboarding process. There's a bunch of different packages that we do. But essentially, um, we have a customer success person who's your point of contact, and then we have a technical person 
who helps you out with best practices uh, and those sorts of things. Um, and we kind of go through what you're trying to do and trying to get you up and running. Um, we're really big on helping customers get up and running. Um, in fact, uh, we're actually changing some of the way that um, okay. where uh, our goals and KPIs are, uh, I think, Mission, we're, yeah. we're, uh, so we had a soft metric to get people alive in eight weeks. It's now becoming a hard metric within our oh. company. Um, and so very much gold around trying to get people up and running as quickly as possible. Um, because we, it, it, you know, the data backs it up. The, student, the faster people lo- go live, the more they do with it. Um, and that's over the lifetime value of, of, of our customers. Um, so we invest quite heavily into making sure that we can do whatever we can to get people up and running. Um, there's also a bunch of online resources and training um they're free you can go play with them now um uh, so you don't have to be a wakato customer to access that um okay. it's like it's the wakato academy yep um you get access to a free trial of wakato there as well as part of that process and then the other thing that is really hard to kind of sell as a salesperson but i i is is incredible is is in um in uh product support so there's a little window down the bottom right uh you can pop that up it has access to all of our documentation and at the bottom of it there's a live chat function where somebody will get back to you within a couple of minutes um around what's going on um we invest really heavily into it and as a, like i said as a salesperson it's, you can go hey it's good but until you experience it and actually have somebody to help out with those sorts of things it's yeah i could definitely vouch for that so yesterday i was um having some trouble extracting a value from something. And so I feel bad because I do, I do sometimes lean heavily on that chat function and I, I sort of shot off a message to the support team. And then, as you said, within a couple of minutes, Richard entered the chat and he fixed that. Like I probably gave him like 50% less context than he required and just screenshots. And somehow he figured it out, like followed me up when I stopped replying because I was trying to, trying to actually run like tests, et cetera. But you're right, like within, yeah, sort of 10 to 15 minutes, that issue was fixed. And yeah, yeah, I haven't had a case where it hasn't been solved. Like if the team member that joins that chat, it's not their sort of realm of expertise or or specialty, they'll escalate it to someone else and, and get it done. And I also remember when we were onboarding about a year ago, you talk about that soft uh, that soft KPI becoming a hard KPI. The amount yeah. of bloody emails you sent me saying, "Are you up? Are you happy? Are you live yet?" And I just sort of said, "Look, leave me alone. I'll come back to you when when I need help." Like it's just, it's a yeah, it's a great culture on making sure that businesses actually use the software that you've sold them. Like it's a yeah. really refreshing experience to have someone where it's like. I don't know, it's not radio silence once you sign up, like most sort of software. Like if you think about a big um, sort of e-signature provider and they may uh, charge um, more than you think per envelope and you may need to commit to the amount of envelopes you're going to send within a specified period. You sign up um, and the only time they've used their software is to send you the actual contract and then you don't hear from them or if you need help, they'll they'll uh, give you to someone else. And then when you do hear from them, it's when you've gone over your license cap and you need to do an early renewal or it's just time for renewal. So, yeah, look, it's a, it's a very refreshing yeah. experience. It, 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 it's interesting working from a, from a salesperson perspective as well because I, I very much try and keep in touch with my customers and not be that sales guy that drops through. Um, but our wholesale support is so good that they just end up dropping me off the meetings because yep. I'm not adding any value into those things. Um I, I've, I've I've been at Wakata over two years now. I've had one escalation the entire time I've been wow. here, um, and that was because Facebook changed its APIs without telling us. Okay, that's nice. Yep. So yeah, it's 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 it's, it's nice to work at a, at a company where it works and they're actively trying to make customers successful. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's great from a a sort of tips to onboard etc. As well as the resources available. I mentioned before that we sort of graduated from Zapier to Wakado. Would you mind just talking about why most businesses come to Wakado and maybe why you would choose a Wakado over, say, a Zapier or like a Microsoft Power Automate? Yeah, no, um, we get this question a lot. Um, 
there's the, um, I guess, the design perspective. We have similar sort of interfaces. I think ours yep. is better, um, but I'm biased. Um, the, the the main reason that we see people kind of moving across is the governance and security aspect of it. Okay. Um, so from a power auto perspective, uh, it's low code, but it's low code for a developer. So you still yeah. need to understand a little bit how that works. And it's they're more of personal productivity tools, if, if that makes sense. So they're great for you to automate some of your tasks. But if you're trying to do that at scale and do that in a compliant, safe way where people can go nuts... Um, mm-hmm. There are some companies that do it. You no, know, um, IAG has a very big power automate practice, but right. the amount of rigor that they have to, manual rigor that they have to put around ensuring that it works is, is quite difficult. Um, so there's that. And then, you know, as soon as data sovereignty becomes a, a, an issue or data masking or encryption or SOC 2 compliance or all of those sorts of things that organizations are requesting more and more and more, um, Cardo has those, you know, built in. We've got some very large financial institutions in the states using our solution, and we've yep. kind of gone through. You, you know, if 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 I come in a competition with somebody asking me about security, um, I, I, it, we win every single time. Um, so that's that, those are the kind of the main reasons is is where you're starting to scale and you're getting to that point where security is an issue, where scale is an issue, and then the other big thing as well is. Um, a Power Automate platform works really well in a Microsoft environment. Okay. Um, Ricardo so connecting has the, in. Sorry to interrupt you. So connecting the existing Microsoft tools that everyone's using to say, exactly this here, do that, do this. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Whereas Vocado has um, over 1,400 connectors. Um, right. X-Plan released their new APIs. I had a new connector for that in two weeks. What's that? X-Plan's in Vocado. Yeah, have you not played around with that yet? No, it's been it's been around for a year. Mm, nice. No, I haven't. Yeah. Um, we actually don't use X Plan within our business. We are oh, looking you to see how that sort of works in general. But just yeah, just repeat that for the listeners. So you're saying that um, I mean this is probably another another string to the bow versus a, a Zapier or a Power Automate is you've got pre built connectors that just need yeah. essentially your login credentials to connect that app. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we've got 1,400 of those ready to go. I We have a number, if we don't have one, we have a number of kind of standard tools that we can use to connect the APIs. And then I've if, if we have the right documentation, um, I can generate the code for a connector within two minutes. So yeah. Um, when you say when you say you, you mean that the Wakato sort of guided process can do that. Is that what you mean? So as in a no, user can do that, or are you talking about yourself? No, as in as in as in somebody who has access to our SDK can drop the API documentation yep. into the tool and it'll generate the code for you. So yep. I mean, I, I I've done it. I, I and I should clarify, I'm not technical at all. Yeah, so it's it's a fairly straightforward process. Um, so what, and then the stuff that we're doing with AI is kind of then the next level of that on top of that. Yeah, kind of can you well. maybe maybe take us through that? Like what's some some of the um yeah, the cool stuff that's happening with with AI in the platform. I know that at the moment the sort of the current um functionality is it's very manual as in you've got to go to those sort of copilot slash chatbot style solutions to get what you want. There's obviously with with Copilot, there's uh, greater certainty around the sort of wall around your data, especially within the Microsoft environment. But now, essentially, with that example you provided before about using ChatGPT and the creating that video with the personalized script, etc. Yeah, give us some AI examples of of AI and Wakato. Yeah, so there's that. So Wakato's always had um, machine learning as part of its platform. So uh, automatically suggesting data mapping fields and and kind of suggesting what actions you want to know, use. We just okay. have been doing that from a usability perspective, um, but we've actually partnered with OpenAI, yep. um, around um, a few different things. Uh, and so the the kind of first cab off the rank is to kind of have like a Chat GPT like experience to build yep. recipes and to build okay. those workflows. So going 
hey, I want to connect Salesforce and Zero, and I want to sync um, anytime yep. we onboard a new customer. Yeah. What's that? Or XPlan, for example. Uh, or XPlan. Yeah. Um, and so rather than you kind of clicking and doing that if and statement, Wakata will generate that and then ask you to confirm it. So kind of even making it easier to build those things. The other piece that we're working on is around that from the connector piece that I kind of hinted at before. At, at the moment, you it needs to be in a certain format for Wakato to generate that code. Okay. Um, where we're going to is you'll just be able to give it the URL of the API documentation and uh, our AI will read that documentation and generate code for you. So even if it's older um, APIs, we'll be able to use that as a way to kind of speed up the development of our thing. So we're very much going down this path of generating connectors as opposed to needing to build them. Yeah. So just to just to clarify your point around building the code for you, what I've experienced is when you're sort of throwing in those files or those um, that API documentation in its current form, what Wakata is actually doing is is reading it, but then it's creating all those actionable steps for you. So then you can essentially click on the action, which might be create client or update client yeah. or whatever it is in that system. So even though you're um, dropping in the code or it's creating the code for you, it's actually creating it in a visual way too. So it's not yeah. um, you're not losing that sort of ease of the visual code nature of of Wakata or the tool that you're using. Um, yeah, so that's absolutely. really good. Yeah, and then the last thing that um we're doing or that I know of that we're doing the AI space because I know our product guys are constantly tinkering. I've just seen a preview of this. We're developing, um, I don't know exactly what it's going to be called, but we've talked about it. So it's it's basically taking those two concepts of generating uh, connectors and generating recipes and having kind of like an agent experience where you'll be able to have a chat GPT like experience and it'll generate the connectors in the background and the recipe flows in the background to pull together that task and do it as a one-off. So if, for example, you wanted to uh, create an event and you wanted to invite your top 10 customers who hadn't created a support ticket, who were um, uh, not overdue, like, you know, all paid up on all of their fees and everything, and you wanted to create an event and it, it, you wanted it to be at this place, you'd go, hey, invite all the, you know, you'd chat GPT, tell it it wanted to do this. Ricardo would then, because it's connected to your CRM system, it would find yeah. out who your top customers are, it would connect to your finance system and find out, make sure that they hadn't um, thing and connect to your support system and cross-check that information and then connect to your marketing uh, information, uh, your email campaign and create yeah. the campaign, create the email and create the list for you. Mm-hmm. So you're saying it's more like a concierge experience where it's doing the whole thing. So so the whole thing is a chat experience rather than just a sort of co-pilot. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So you'll be able to do all together anything from any of those systems. So schedule a meeting, pull it together information, any of those things that you'd it, like – if you are ever an experience where you go, hey, I wish the system could just do, yeah. and if you can describe it, the idea is that these agents will be able to take that description and translate that into recipes nice. and into a Wakata workflow and then pull that information to you, together for you on nice. the fly. That's very so, cool. All of my cool little demo things, like the the thing that I mm. built to go and prospect and go yep. create custom messages yep. for, 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 you know, 2,500 emails, I wouldn't need to put together that. I would just go, hey, I want you to build me this where, and exactly as I described it, and it'll go and create that and then build that as a function for, okay. for me to, to consume on a regular basis. So you, you're taking away some of that sort of blank canvas anxiety. You can start with a... A couple of sentences, it can build it out for you. You can quickly see what it's done and then you can reassess and go, what did you do that for? That's not what I asked for, even though you did, just didn't give it enough context and then you can go again. Yeah, and, and there's going to be governance and, and, and you know, all of that. And that's basically what's being worked on at the moment. But uh, the, it, it'll be your own personal assistant within. Yeah, well. Then 
the way the guy, the product guy was describing it to me is he'll never do admin again. Well, big claim. I'd love to see that come to fruition. Look, I've, 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 I've seen a very narrow prototype and I've got to be very excited to the point where I've stopped working on my AI projects because I'm like, I'll just wait till this comes out. Just wait, okay. No um, so yeah, and big then, claims, but look, we'll see. Oh, definitely. No, there's, um, you've also mentioned like there's, there's a truckload of some minor releases, some major ones. Like, yeah. have you, I mean, what are some of the other tools in Wakato as well? Like, we've focused heavily on the recipe stuff, so the back end automation, yeah. but you've also got things that where you can essentially build your own apps and yeah. that sort of stuff too. Yeah. So, this is the cool thing about being a SaaS company. Um, yeah. I think last year we did 700 updates. Okay. Um, throughout the so whole year. And so, yeah, something, something like that. Yeah. Um, and so, kind of the AI stuff is the kind of, it, it's one of those cool things where uh, the kind of off the cuff remark releases that we've done at other companies that I've worked at, they would have been the main focus and the main thing that we've done. Right. Um, whereas we just kind of build them in as part of the course. Um, so, yeah, one of the other things that we've introduced is uh, a Wakato app, which is essentially a low code app form building piece. So, mm-hmm. at the moment, you can use Slack. And teams for kind of that interface to okay. trigger things and build data. What this will allow you to do is to create your own form or app. And so think about an approval process that needs to go across multiple different systems. Um, so when you're trying to put together a proposal or mm. that whole workflow, you can use Vocado to essentially help orchestrate and visualize that. Um, okay. So where that is, come- what stage you're up to in the process and what's what needs to come. Yeah, and whose approval we're waiting on, and what's happening, and and so it can it'll be able to respond to both human and system changes uh, updates. Um, oh, okay, so you're saying the process might be eighty percent automated, but there might be that one manual step where a human needs to intervene. Yeah, so like an approval for a contract to go out, or right. you know, on hiring somebody, or make a decision one, two, or three, or whatever that piece is, and then giving visibility to everybody else around yep. where it is in that process. Wow. Far yeah. out. And I guess, yeah, next question is, if, if someone wants to learn more, Luke, how can they get in touch with you or Wakato? Yeah, so um, uh, you can reach out to me. Um, uh, my LinkedIn's, um, uh, they're yep. available. And all my contact details are there. Or yep. honestly, reach out to Wakato and um, sign up for a demo and just describe what you want. Uh, yep. We use Vocado internally, so it's an automated yep. process, and somebody will get back to you within five minutes. So that, that honestly, that's the fastest way to get in touch with us because, uh, yeah, yep. we drink our own champagne, and it goes very, very quickly. Well, I think just you just reminded me when we we were sort of having that um, those opening discussions, as in you and I. I think yep. instead of going straight to the PowerPoint or the Google slides, you just said, "What are you trying to do?" And then you said, "Let's try and build it," and then we built it. And then it was like, okay, let's um, let's sign up. Like, yeah, I it think it's just yeah, the speed to basically the yeah speed to get what we needed was just so quick. I was like, okay, yeah. this is the tool we need to implement. I think I think we met on a Friday, and by when uh, over the weekend you built a bunch of stuff. By Wednesday you'd presented it to your team. We lost a day on Thursday, and on Friday we were signing contracts. So yeah, it was um, a lightning quick. Yeah, Ricardo. Keep banging on about him. <laughs> thank you, Luke. We really appreciate it. If you hate it, automate it. And yeah, thank you, Luke. I'm sure, yeah, keep an eye on your LinkedIn DMs and your email address. So I'm sure it might blow up. But yes. yeah, thank you, Luke. And yeah, thanks for your support. Yeah, appreciate it. And uh, thanks for having me.